Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for March 2024. It has been a chill month in the project with just over 800 commits. And uh, most of them have been in the browser stack as usual. So we already covered all of that yesterday in the Ladybird update. But there have been a bunch of things happening in the operating system as well. So I'd like to showcase some of them today. Uh, we'll be starting with something very, very small, but very cute, which is we have a new icon for the image viewer application, a little Polaroid here. And if we open the about box, I guess we can see the slightly larger version. Uh, image viewer had a pretty crappy icon for a long time. People even complained about it <laughs> somewhat regularly, but nobody ever stepped up to make a better one until now. So uh, this uh, app icon is by Cubic Love. So thank you, Cubic Love, for finally giving Image Viewer an app icon that looks nice. Um, and in other graphical updates, uh, we also have in the uh, snake game, there is a new default skin for the snake. Look at this green boy eating all these animal emojis. Um, it's one of many skins that we ship with. Uh, me personally, I like the ladybird skin, but uh, <laughs> that one we already had. The snake skin is new. I think we still have... Uh, this is the classic skin that I made a long time ago. But uh, this new snake skin is by Pixelbrush, who um, I think joined the project fairly recently and has been doing a lot of nice little graphical things, a lot of emojis and stuff. And this is another one of Pixelbrush's uh, little graphical improvements. So thank you, Pixel Brush, for the new snake skin. All right. Um, then moving on to apps in the analog clock, we have a new feature where you can show the time zone for a clock, and uh, it allows you to switch your clocks to a different time zone. Um, and it's nice here, actually, that we can <laughs> use the scrollable menus feature because I don't remember the last time I used that. Uh, let's say that I want a uh, clock for Budapest. So I will set up an analog clock for that. And maybe I want to have another one for, um, I guess, my local time zone where I am right now. So this allows me to have two separate analog clocks on my desktop for different time zones. Uh, and I suppose I could even turn off the window frame if I wanted to be fancy. Uh, maybe we need to allow you to change the text color or something, or perhaps put a little shadow under it. I don't know, <laughs> but it doesn't really work well with this wallpaper. Um, anyway, the, um, the feature where you can show the time zone and, and toggle different time zones was implemented by Ronak. So thank you, Ronak, for doing that. Um, all right, then let's look at something bigger. So uh, new this month is loopback devices in our kernel. And a loopback device is essentially um, a fake block device in the kernel that allows you to take a normal file and uh, use it to emulate a block device. So if you download a uh, disk image from the web, um, you can create a loop device um, and then attach the uh, disk image to that loop device and then let the kernel think that it's looking at a block device, which is actually a simulation. Uh, and I guess to demonstrate this, why don't we go and get uh, some kind of, I don't know, DOS boot disk. <laughs> okay. Let's get a DOS 5.0 IMG. Okay. And then let's go ahead and mount this. So I think it's T fat. Um, and then this should just be picked up transparently. So uh, I'm not clean here. I'm just anon DOS 5. Oh, I will mount it on MNT floppy, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Okay. So now we have on mount floppy, and that should allow us to list stuff in this directory. So 
uh, if we look at mount, or where can I see this? In dev loop, perhaps? Wait, this didn't make a loop device? I assume this would make a loop device. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm confused. How does that even work then? Okay, I'm just looking in my kernel debug output and it says, you can't see it on screen, but it's in my <laughs> other terminal. Uh, it does say that it mounted a loop device. So I guess it just doesn't show up in the dev loop file system. Um, we should probably make that show up there, but it doesn't currently. Um, but yeah, it allows you to do this, which is really cool. And uh, it also allows you allows me to demonstrate um, fat support. So we've had fat file system support for some time, uh, but we um, haven't had a way to demo it, or I haven't had a way to demo it. But now that I do, I can show you. So the fat file system, I think, was originally uh, implemented by Undefine, and then it was worked on by a bunch of people like Implicit Field and Taj, and uh, now we can actually enjoy this beautiful autoexec.bat in text editor from a mounted DOS disk image. Um, <laughs> all of that coming together. Uh, but the loopback device support was, was added by Liav. So thank you, Liav, for implementing that. Um, very, very cool. All right. And I guess the next thing I want to talk about is emojis. So, um, let me see. I have a file here with some new emojis. Um, can I open that in Ladybird? Seems like not really. <laughs> I thought that would work. Um, all right. So here they are. Wow, they are painfully small here. Maybe can I switch to a bigger? Um, let's switch to a really large font and then maybe it will <laughs> size up the emojis ah, there we go um, modern problems modern solutions so we got a bunch of new ones these are by Hecha, so a man scientist We've got gloves coat and then pixel brush contributed a whole bunch of emojis um, there might have been more emojis these are just some of the ones that i uh, picked up and got that flat shoe anatomical heart a bunch of others, and of course, everyone's favorite, the man in business suit levitating. Uh, not an emoji I've personally used a lot, but I'm glad that it exists. So thank you, Hecha and uh, Pixel Brush for adding emojis this month. Um, but a much, much cooler thing about emojis this month than a few new ones is that uh, we are now officially recognized by Emojipedia uh, as... Um, an emoji collection, I guess. So uh, they have a page about us. Um, this website doesn't look great in Ladybird, actually. Something we need to work on. But yeah, so we are an officially recognized emoji set on Emojipedia. And if you were to open up the page about an emoji, we should be one of the examples. And my gosh, my gosh, is it slow. Um, what if I just go to a heart? Or I want a nerd face. Would it be that? I hope it's that one. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see if it shows up. It might not. Uh, oh, I'm starting to see some. These are like the telegram emojis. Loading in some emojis here. Oh my goodness, this is not fast. I just want to see our version. <laughs> Even if the page is all busted. Where are we? Oh, there's us. Serenity OS. <laughs> and our nerd face emoji. So we are part of Emojipedia. Uh, very, very cool. They added us uh, in earlier in March. And I think it was um, Hecha who had been talking to the Emojipedia folks and got them to um, bring us in. So that is very, very cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> so just wanted to share that with you all. Um, but um, we also have a bunch of new stuff in our PDF support this month. And to talk about that, I've invited Nico 
to uh, tell you about Mac PDF and our progress there. Well, hello friends. Uh, time for a very short update on what's new in PDFs this month. And uh, the big thing we added uh, this month is be much better support for bi-level images, so images that are just black and white. Last month I had mentioned that Lucas had added support for CCITT images and we were able to open about half of the CCITT images that we find in PDFs. Uh, that's a file format that was used by fax machines back in the day and it's still uh, in, in PDFs. Um, and so this month uh, Lucas put in some more work and now we're able to open more or less all of the CCITTs that we find in practice. So here's a document, um, this is what it looked like last month. And now uh, we can show the image that's on that page and it looks much better. So last month everybody was excited that we were able to render more text. So this month we're like, let's render even more text. And isn't that a big improvement? And also the way this uh, this file is supposed to work is it has the scanned image in the background and it has the text in the foreground, but it's supposed to be hidden. And so then when you select text, uh, if we had support for text selections, uh, you would select the hidden text, you could copy it, you could find from, uh, find the page and do all these things. Uh, so now we know not to draw hidden text, but we have a debug menu entry to force it. And you could argue like maybe uh, the previous version actually looked better for this file because the text is vector based. And I think at the moment that's true, but our image um, scaling algorithm in PDFs is currently like very, very, very bad. And when we improve it, improve it this will look better. Uh, here's another example PDF. Um, this is what this looked last month. This looked like last month. Um, so here the text is in the background and the image is drawn on top of it. And here's this like some progression since we have these tables and this line and whatnot. Um, and for this PDF, the image is in a file format called JBIG2, um, which we now also support. Um, that's uh, a more space efficient um, file format than CCITT. Uh, it's used heavily on Google Books, so all these uh, old books, uh, you can download, just download this PDF from Google Books. Uh, Flatline is uh, kind of like uh, a famous one now. You can read this in Serenity's PDF view if you want to. Um, and here you can also, like, they do the thing where they put the uh, image in the background and then uh, hidden text on top of it, but if you make the text visible, they actually use a font where all the glyphs are just like squares since you can't see them anyway, so it has the right encoding, so you can copy and find, but uh, I, they probably do this for space savings. Um, the actual text uh, looks worse. Uh, yeah, so I think this is probably what this looked like uh, one month ago, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, one thing uh, like for JVIC is for the JVIC2 format is that it can save um, like many small uh, bitmaps, and then the big bitmaps just says draw this small bitmap here, and the small bitmap here, and the small bitmap here. And I um, like locally um, change the code so that it saves all of these bitmaps so you can have a look. So these are like all the small bitmaps um, in flatland.pdf. And these are like shared across all the pages and then every page that says like store like draw this bitmap here or this bitmap or this bitmap so it has like many very similar letters like these are all r's and jvg2 in theory also can say um like this r is this r with like just a bunch of pixels changes changed but the pdfs used by google books don't use this feature um at least the ones i've looked at so you can tell like many 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 letters um, and the file format doesn't know that those are letters, just looks and up here it's like dots of dots, just looks at like com connected components. Um, I think somewhere down here there's a th that's connected by like one pixel, or where the t and the h are connected, or oh, here the, yeah, yeah, and here's a like po, and since it's connected by one pixel, uh, jvg2 is like, ah, oh, this is like one small image, this is cool. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, we also like did some, some small encoding tweaks. Um, so this used to like not render any text and now it does, but that's uh, not that interesting. Like the big changes, uh, much better support by level images. And let's see what happens next month. Right?